agenda questions at this time. Please limit your questions at this time to resolutions under new business on this agenda. As a matter of fairness, you are asked to limit your questions to no more than one and your remarks to no, long, no longer than three minutes. If you are here representing a group, please identify yourself, the group, and the position in the group. If you are here as an individual, please give us your name and address. This section of part public participation will be limited to 15 minutes. Please specify the resolution you are referring to in your question. Evelyn Slockbrow, 43 Thunder Head Oh, sorry. Well, thank you. Yes, I can. Just make sure it's on. This is Slockbrow. Hello? No, no. I had to switch it. It's right. You got top. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hello? Thank you. Okay. I just had a question about the resurfacing of the high school field, okay? Um, and I guess. Um, how often does that need to be done? Um, the, it, I guess the properties of the field and how it breaks down and how often is that necessary? Um, the AstroTurf field has got a general life expectancy of about 10 to 15 years. Uh, again, as you had indicated, it varies depending on how much use it gets, uh, the location where it is, um, regarding the elements that can impact it as well. Uh, we're right around that 10-year mark right now, so that's why we are putting together plans in place to um, look at and see what the cost of the uh, replacement would be. Okay, thank you. Right, good evening. Deirdre Wilson, uh, Judith Pancourt. Um, do you think that the teachers deserve a raise? This, this has to be pertaining to what's on the agenda. Okay. Keep in mind at the end of the board meeting. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. At the end of the board meeting, oh, okay. if you'd like, Thank you, you can come up with that question. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. The superintendent's report this evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Is the microphone on? No. We're good? We're good. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a, a real um, short report this evening, but, uh, but one that we're very proud of. U.S. News and World Report released the 2016 Best High School Rankings at the state and national levels yesterday. I'm extremely happy to report that Mawa High School ranked 32 out of 410 high schools in New Jersey. <laughs> ranked 594 out of 21,000 high schools nationally. We are truly an awesome school district with exceptional teachers and exceptional administrators. Our congratulations to all. Thank you. Um, I can draw your attention to Agenda item C under new business personnel. Um, sure. Up for approval is a recommendation for a uh, supervisor of English language arts grades 6 through 12 uh, from Maureen Lynch. Unfortunately, Maureen Lynch can't be here today, but she uh, has stated that she would love to come to our next board event meeting. Uh, she comes to us from Cresskill with 21 years of teaching experience. Uh, Maureen has taught everything from college prep, ELA, to advanced placement, where she's also served as an AP reader. She's interviewed with our panel, uh, and she's also completed a presentation related to our technology initiative uh, that served to communicate her vision curricularly uh, with specific regards to our English language arts department. Uh, when reaching out to Ms. Lynch's references, she's been characterized as rigorous, smart, efficient, and highly respected by students and her fellow colleagues. Uh, so we're really excited to welcome Maureen to our district. Uh, also, just to give you an update on our Betsy Ross principal search, uh, we're, after reviewing approximately 75 applications, uh, we chose uh, 11 candidates to interview with the committee that uh, was represented by teachers, uh, building principals, as well as central, central office staff. And we're down to finalists, and we hope to have someone for approval, recommendation, 
uh, on our May 4th agenda. Um, also, you'll see here um, for agenda item B, we have a retirement. Uh, Mary Albert. Hi, Mary. Mary's in the audience tonight. <laughs> Mary spent the last 13 years uh, here teaching English language arts in the district. Uh, she's taught at the middle school and the high school, and she uh, is currently teaching at the high school. She's taught honors and college preparatory levels of English. Uh, she's responsible for drafting and refining, particularly our creative writing course, which has been uh, revered uh, by our students. And in working on our, on our ELA curriculum, Mary has been critical in infusing poetry into all of our units. Uh, in her retirement, Mary hopes to find the time to travel, spend time with family, and continue in writing her poetry. She's also been known to read a poem or two, beginning or ending a department meeting. So, thank you, Mary. Uh, you'll be missed. And lastly, you'll see uh, under agenda item A, we have the retirement of building principal for Rampo Ridge Middle School, Brian Miller. Uh, he served as the principal for Rampo Ridge for 16 years. Um, he's been characterized as a dynamic instructional leader in the building. Uh, anyone who sat in on his staff meetings, uh, he, he runs them with careful thought, uh, purpose, and precision. Uh, amongst his principal cohort, Brian is considered to be a wonderful administrative colleague. And from central office perspective, uh, he's considered to be a bright and caring guy, and we wish him nothing but the best. We'll miss him. This evening I don't have, no, sorry. This evening I do not have anything to report. I'd like to know if any other uh, committees have anything they'd like to report this evening. One real quick for, um, is this for? Yeah, you oh, sorry, excuse me. I forgot our business administrator. Sorry about that. Um, Kyle, do you have anything you'd like to tell us this evening? Uh, yes, I have the uh, third um, budget presentation Thank to talk you. about this evening. <laughs> been uh, presenting the 2016-2017 preliminary budget to the Board of Education uh, since we adopted the preliminary budget on May, I believe it was 18th. Uh, this is our third presentation. I'm going to discuss a couple of non-personnel uh, areas of the budget as well as some capital projects that we have included for funding through this budget. Uh, we're going to have one more meeting uh, next uh, session, May 4th, for the final hearing on the budget for 16-17 for school year. So one of the areas I'd like to discuss and focus on is out-of-district tuition. Uh, it is one that is going to be uh, having a approximately half million dollar budget increase. Uh, the reason for that increase is because right now we have approximately 61 students that are currently out of district. We're anticipating three that are going to be either returning to district or aging out and graduating from the placement that they're currently in. We also are anticipating uh, 10 potential new placements for 16-17 school year. And I think it's worth mentioning that these placements, because it can be varied depending on what the needs of the student are, uh, they can range anywhere from as low as $30,000 to potentially as high as $100,000 these placements. In addition to those that are um, special ed students, we have 40 uh, full-time students who attend either Bergen County Technical, Vocational, or, or the Academy program. Uh, again, we anticipate five that are going to be either aging out or graduating. And we are aware of 17 that have applied to one of these programs for September. Uh, some of the students are still in the decision-making process, uh, but we are comfortable uh, planning for 17 new placements for next year. As far as maintenance and operations, this is one area that we are, we're going to be seeing a decrease for next year. Uh, this supports six maintenance staff and three custodial staff. When it comes to these repairs for our facilities and supplies, purchase services such as custodial and snow removal, uh, our insurance for general liability and building costs are in here as well. Also, all of our utility costs for water, sewer, gas, and electric. Uh, one of the primary drivers and reasons for the large 
decrease is several projects that were actually started the year before in 14-15, didn't finish until this summer, summer 2015, so they therefore carried over and inflated that 15-16 uh, number slightly. Another area that to uh, bring to attention is transportation. Again, encompasses a uh, pretty significant portion of the budget. Uh, we're going to be seeing a decrease here of approximately $30,000. Uh, this supports 5.8 staff, this includes our bus drivers. And some of the transportation areas that um, we are, are encompassed here are the extracurricular and athletic trips that we do, uh, as well as busing for the students to and from school. Uh, our contract services for general special ed, these are some of the added district placements that I spoke about earlier. The aid in lieu of transportation, these are for residents who um, send their students to a private school. Uh, there is a transportation reimbursement for them that we are also obligated to uh, offer the parents, as well as for gas and bus supplies, things of that nature. Uh, going over the capital projects, uh, as I said before, there are a few uh, projects that are included in this budget that we are looking to fund from our capital reserve account. Uh, the total dollar amount to be um, projected is one million one seventy four. Uh, these include four primary projects. Uh, first is boiler replacement at three of the schools. Uh, Betsy Ross and George Washington are both having two replacement or backup boilers replaced, as well as one at the high school. Uh, roof replacement at building eight here on the high school campus. The athletic turf field replacement that we spoke about earlier, uh, as well as uh, some improvements and enhancements to building five, again here on the high school campus. Um, while we're talking about some projects within the capital reserve account, I thought it would be a good idea to go back and look at some past projects that have been funded from this account through the unanimous approval of the board. Um, some of the projects that George Washington has been, have been boiler replacement and installation of HVAC in the multi-purpose room as well as a replacement of its roof. Uh, Joyce Kilmer School, uh, several infrastructure projects such as air conditioning and univentilator replacements. Uh, roof replacement, uh, again, a multi-purpose room, HVAC, and a boiler replacement. Aramco Ridge, a boiler replacement and roof, uh, HVAC upgrade to their system there. Uh, Betsy Ross, again, a boiler replacement and uh, installation of HVAC services to their multi-purpose room. And lastly, at the high school, uh, one of the more recent projects, the installation of a backup generator and an upgrade to their electrical service. Uh, the athletic field, that's the uh, original installation uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, replacement to the roof, HVC upgrade, and a boiler replacement. Uh, and to conclude, as I said before, this is the third presentation. Uh, tonight we just ran, um, discussed some of the non-personnel line items of capital projects. There will be one more presentation uh, in two weeks. That's going to be our uh, final budget hearing and final adoption of the 2016-2017 budget. Um, from the board, are there any questions? For me? Thank you very much. Thank you, Kyle, for that presentation. Uh, now, do we have any committee reports? Uh, just real quick for, um, for policy on 15D, we have a first reading of three uh, mandatory policies and regulations. Uh, the first one being the eligibility of resident and non-resident pupils. Um, basically, what that one is for, it, uh, it's an update that allows a student to stay uh, in district in, uh, in the event that their family uh, has to move out of town for um, domestic violence uh, situation. Uh, the health services really just deals with um, mandatory medical exams for uh, sports uh, participation. And the third one for obvious reasons is the administration of medical marijuana. That's definitely something we need to Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, negotiations uh, as well. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. No. No? Can you hear me now? Yes. Better? All right. Sorry, I'll speak up. Uh, so we do have a negotiating committee report. Um, got a lot of questions from uh, board members um, regarding where we are in terms of uh, recent contract activity, uh, some of the issues that are impacting the negotiations, as well as where we are from a timeline uh, perspective. So we, we put a presentation together. Uh, I'm going to do that now, we hit the lights and uh, we'll just track people through it. We're going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, 
we're going to distribute the uh, presentation among some of the uh, members of the committee so everybody gets a chance to uh, speak a little bit. Um, and uh, any, obviously, questions from the board will entertain at this, at this phase. And then any questions from the public, I guess, will come up as a function of uh, this, this part of the presentation, right? OK. So uh, let's go ahead and just bring up the, uh, bring up the slides. So, uh, so I get the next one. So um, some of the questions that the committee was getting is, is it seems like we're constantly in a state of negotiation, or it feels like we're, we're always doing a contract. Why, why does it feel that way? Uh, so we went back and basically looked at the, at the history of the last two agreements. Um, for a long time, we were very good at getting three-year agreements done. The last three-year agreement we did covered the years from uh, 2010 and 11 through 2012 and 2013. That's really been the norm. Uh, for us, and in that three-year agreement, the pay raises uh, were 2.5, 2.5, and 2.0. Um, and in the beginning of that uh, period, not something that was negotiated at the at the district level, but something that was implemented at the state level, uh, was the contribution to health care uh, and, and health care cost share. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a bit. I think the key thing for everybody to understand from a board member perspective is this is the first time that anybody had to contribute to the health care. And it it's, takes some getting used to. So it, it's, it's a big expense. It can be a little shocking. There is a four-year phase-in period that we're now at the end of, and uh, we'll step you through that. But from the, from the board's perspective, everybody just has to be aware of the fact that it's a, it's a big change. Um, in 2014-2015, we did a one-year agreement. That was atypical. Uh, we, like I said earlier, historically, we've done three-year agreements. Um, we did a raise of 2.7%. Uh, starting to at least be able to keep pace a little bit with what was happening in terms of the health care contributions. We still did have a state-mandated contribution level, but at the end of that 14-15 agreement, the state-mandatory contributions become negotiable. And so that's important to understand in terms of where we are, in terms of how things have been, uh, have been progressing. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, because health care is such a, a significant issue, is uh, uh, Michael Gallo, who's uh, uh, new to the uh, committee, uh, is going to take the next part of the presentation and educate the board a little bit about what exactly the health care contribution means. Uh, and then Rick's going to do a part on timeline, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. The board can ask any questions um, while we're presenting this. Okay. How are you, Michael? So in, 19, uh, in 2011, excuse me, the state adopted uh, Public Law 78, which, dis which prescribed <laughs> mandatory health care contributions for all public employees in the state of New Jersey. There was a four-year phase-in of employee contributions, a gradual increase in the rate of contribution, and in 2015, the phase-in period was over, and uh, boards of education, and I assume municipal um, entities, were also allowed to begin negotiating health care again. During the implementation phase, that four-year phase-in period, the board and all other municipal entities in New Jersey were not allowed to negotiate uh, health benefits as part of collective bargaining. Um, so today we are we're at the end of the phase in. The phase in ended last year, and currently our employees um, uh, contribute uh, based on the rate of their amount of their salary and the type of plan they select, either a single uh, spouse, child, or family plan. Um, in our district, we happen to offer 20 different plans. Um, that are, um, are all very good, high quality plans. Um, and they offer a variety of benefits for our employees. Most employees have selected a, a plan that was in existence prior to the implementation of 78. You can go to the next slide. What we're trying to show here in this chart is in 2009 and 2010, there were no health care contributions by employees to the district. The district paid 100% of the health care costs of our employees. Gradually through the implementation of Public Law 78, we went uh, from a rate of 6% on these, I should step back in a second, the blue, the blue bars are the average rate of contribution for our employees. So that's taking the total cost of health care for the district and dividing the amount that the teachers pay into that. So when we skip out to 15, 16, and 14, 15, the average rate of contribution for our employees in general is 22 percent and the district obviously pays the other 78 percent. So 
it sounds like this is dramatically bending the curve for the district, and for a period of time it did. And if we go to the next slide, so this slide shows the actual cost to the district, total cost of the district, including employee contributions for health care. So except for the difference between 2009 and 2010, and to, 2000, to excuse me, to 2010, 2011, the net cost to the district of health care benefits has been increasing every single year. When we go to the what I would call the um, terminal period, the, between 1415 and 1516, when we're in the steady state of 78 implementation, the there's actually a dramatic change to the district. So let me get my little chart out here. So. Between 14 and 15 and 15 and 16, the total health care cost to the district increase was $703,000. $564,000 of that increase is borne by the district. So in future years, when we're in the steady state, 78% 70, of the cost increase will accrue to the district. And, and that will be basically in perpetuity unless there's another public law 78 that comes down the pipe. But essentially, Healthcare costs total for the district have been increasing at a rate four times the rate at which our revenues can increase. So our revenues are, are capped at 2% per year, and in, on average, healthcare costs are growing at about 10% per year. So healthcare is going to continue to eat up more and more of our operating budget, limiting our ability to undertake other initiatives and eliminating our ability to provide uh, pay increases to our staff. If we go to the next slide, this is some, essentially a summary of what, we're, what I just discussed. The 2% hard cap um, was something that the state imposed on taxing authorities, districts, municipalities, to increase property taxes. One of the tools that uh, was given to us was the ability to pass on some portion of the health care uh, costs to employees. The net effect of that today is that 22% of the health care cost benefit is paid for by employees, 78% by the district. And if we go to the next slide, so this illustrates in 2014 the district uh, went to the 2% cap. We raised just under $1.1 million in additional new revenue, and of that revenue, 594000 close to 600000 54% of the new revenue simply went for pay, teacher pay increases. 15% went to health care and health benefit increases. 31% went to all the other operating uh, cost expenses, expense increases in the district. If we were to flash forward to 2016, uh, to the next budget period, 1516, essentially 50% of our new taxing authority is going to the pay of teachers, and the other 50% is going to health care costs. So essentially, we are, making a, we, we are dedicating 100% of our new revenue to staff costs, either in terms of benefits or salaries. So it's a pretty important commitment that we're making to the investment of our staff. Um, the next portion of the, of the uh, slideshow is going to be handled by uh, my colleague, Rick De Silva, who will go through the process we've been engaged in um, since basically February of 2015. All right, so going back to uh, over a year ago, for uh, February and, uh, and March were our first two uh, formal sessions where, uh, where we met um, basically in this room face to face and, and had what, uh, what we would consider to be uh, constructive meetings. Um, we actually got a, a, a good bit done, uh, in my opinion. Went into uh, the meeting in um, last April uh, with, with high hopes for basically being done and, and, and wrapping up a, 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 a formal proposal or a, a, an agreement. Um, sort of caught us off guard. Uh, we had a, a new NJEA rep who had not been present at the previous meetings. Um, sort of called the time out and uh, after, after some discussion, let us know that he felt that no progress had really been made and advised that, um, advised the, uh, the MEA to, to Declare impasse, which was done. Um, so what happens when when impasse is declared is the initiation of the perk process. And what a lot of people don't really understand that the, the perk process. So once this starts, um, we're sort of stuck with the, the schedule of the mediators. 
Now, the mediators, there are three mediators for the entire state. And when I say the entire state, I don't mean teachers in the entire state. I mean every public employee union negotiation. Um, so that's police, professional firefighters, uh, departments of public works, along with teachers, three of them for the entire state. So consequently, when we, you know, once this process is initiated to get on the schedule of one of these people, one of these uh, mediators, you're looking between four and five months in between meetings. So that process was initiated uh, last April, um, and we sort of had to sit on our hands. And we were waiting for scheduling of, of a mediator. So in an effort to sort of jumpstart the conversation, uh, the board decided to reduce our offer to writing and present that to the association in July. So that was done, again, just to, to sort of get something going, you know, so that we didn't have to wait all this time to sort of make it happen a little more quickly because, like I said, it's a very long, long drawn out process. So uh, we did receive a response uh, in August. Um, basically the response was uh, no. Uh, we didn't get a counter offer, just, uh, just a rejection of, of our offer. So the first mediation session uh, finally happened in September. Okay, so the, the process was initiated in April. We got April, May, June, July, August, September. So that's six months later, we finally got a mediator. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the mediation sessions, basically what happens is one group is in one room, the other group is in another room, and there is no contact or conversation between the two. Um, basically, we have uh, Ray represents us as uh, Joe and, and, and Peg's uh, counterparts, and we have the mediator. Basically, they discuss, they go to one room, they discuss, they come back to the other room, they discuss. Um, basically, with, with all due respect to, to these people, they make their living on us not being able to have those conversations and to be able to settle these things on our own. So that's sort of whose hands this is in when that happens. Um, so we did that, as you might imagine, you know, given how that, that all uh, kind of plays out. No progress was made in that, uh, in that meeting. Um, while this is happening back in October, uh, we did settle. We, we reached settlements with the principals and supervisors. Um, that process happened the same way we initiated uh, with the MEA, and we were successful there. Um, the next mediation session happened in January, so you got September, October, November, December, January. So five months later, again, nothing happening in between. You know, in between this, you know, we, we despite our, our our willingness and 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 statements that we're we're ready to to continue the conversation and not have to wait five six months in between these meetings. Um, it took another five minutes or five months. So we had another mediation session. Again, we went to Dennis's office. The association was in this room, and there was no conversation or contact between us. Um, consequently, again, really no progress was made. Uh, we were happy to have the opportunity at the end of March, on March 31st, to meet without Ray and without Joe and without a mediator, just our, our committee and a, a representative group uh, from, from the association. Um, I'm real comfortable in the statement that more got done in those few hours where we're sitting there and actually having a conversation, talking to one another, than had happened in the entire year previous. Um, at the end of that meeting, we sort of wrapped it up and then our committee went back into Dennis's office and we were here for another two and a half hours kind of chewing on the information that, you know, that we had gleaned from the, the conversation that we had, the face-to-face. -face. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer that things get done when people sit down and actually talk to one another. And I, my frustration really with the PERC process and how long it takes, and really there's no contact in between the two sides during that process, is, is very frustrating. We, like I said, we were, we were glad to have that that informal session on, uh, on, on March 31st. Uh, I feel we got a lot done. You know, unfortunately we're so far down the road now, we're still on track for the last one on the 2nd, May 2nd, we have 
uh, formal fact finding, which is another step in the PERP process. Um, you know, since the, the, the conversation between the parties happened so, you know, so far down the line, we're still going to stick with, you know, continue that process um, and continue our conversations, hopefully, in, in between there. So, fact finding, as I understand it, I haven't been part of this process before, but from what I understand, um, we've submitted our offer uh, and sort of the justifications to the fact finder. Um, the association has submitted a bunch of information in support of their position. Um, after this meeting, I guess the, the fact finder is going to review all the information that he or she has and make a recommendation, um, which happens how? Like four to six weeks. The four to six weeks after the meeting. So, you know, the unfortunate thing about that is now that we're more than a year through the process, that process, whatever the, the fact finder recommends, is non-binding. So if either side doesn't like the recommendation, basically, you know, we look at it and say, okay, that's good, but we're still not going to participate at that level. And the process just rolls on. So we're hopeful that, you know, we're, we're able to, outside of this process, because I, honestly, I, I, I feel no hope for the, that process, the way it goes. Um, I'm hopeful that our, our continued conversations are Sorry, it, it, it's, let me rephrase. I, I, I feel that more will get done outside of the process. It, it's the outside of the process and actually having a conversation is more effective than, than not, than having somebody walk in between the two rooms. Um, after this meeting, our committee is gonna meet again. We'll probably be here for, you know, for quite a while. We've got, we've been keeping Kyle busy coming up with a, a lot of information that we can sort of grind through and see where we can go and what we can figure out. We are absolutely hopeful, um, you know, at some point this will get done and we're hopeful that it'll be sooner than later. Thanks. I only got one more uh, slide and uh, just to, you know, keep the board informed of, you know, where things have been and where they're going. Uh, so the, the uh, bar charts in the, in the blue represent the um, pay raises through the prior contracts that I reviewed at the beginning of the presentation and the uh, ones in the uh, brown um, represent the um, the uh, uh, pay raises which were contracted with both the principals uh, group as well as the what's that? Orange. That's orange? <laughs> brown. Is it really orange? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me amend my previous remarks and uh, suggest that the bar chart on the right is orange, um, and it represents the uh, contracted percentages that were agreed to with both the principals group and the supervisors group, and that, that's clearly the trend uh, that that the board should be prepared for uh, as we as we go forward. Um, so that that's our that's our report. Basically, we wanted to let you. You know, answer the questions that, that I got, which was, you know, what's really been happening from a contract standpoint? Um, what are the major issues that are impacting the negotiation? What's the timeline been? Where are we right now in terms of the trends in, in, uh, in pay? Um, so that's our report, uh, President. So if the board has questions, we can do that. Um, we can take those now, or, or how are you all want to do it? Thank you. So, it's we can do it right now. Yeah, sure. Board questions well, I mean, for the board. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, do you have any board questions at this time? Comments? Comment statement. Oh, and, yeah. And Rick, you, you really hit it. Um, 331, informal session, and I apologize. I, sorry about that. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, 331, and I apologize. I was out of town to make that session. But the feedback that I got from the committee was that that was very productive, face to face. I can't agree with you more having the face-to-face. -face. I like to see that we have these as frequent mm -hmm. and as often as we can. And that we keep on saying it as a board that we're open to meet and we'll clear our calendars. I mean, we all work, but we're open to meet as often. I don't think, to your point about the perk, the process, and bring mediators in and then get to the end of the day and it's like, you know what, all bets are off. Because you can do that in that process. So I agree with you. I think that we as a community, as residents of the community, that we can set face to face and come up with an agreement as we have done in the past. And that's that's how it's gonna get done in my opinion. That needs to happen as as 
often and as many times as possible until we meet our mutual goal of, of a new uh, a new renewed contract for attention. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Anybody else have questions? It's a question from uh, question from Mike. Question for Mike. So the that unfortunate very large increase in health care premiums that would look at overall, um, given that we probably have approximately the same amount of uh, staff in the district, what is the reason for that huge increase? Is it just normal inflation or? Inflation in the medical inflation in the United States runs at three times the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Inflate, medical inflation in the United States runs at multiples of the base rate of inflation. And we are just part of an overall trend of higher costs, lower, lower, lower quality of service that uh, is a much larger issue than we can deal with in our negotiation. But it's clearly a, a huge stumbling block. It's a, it's a huge issue for the families of our, uh, of our educators that we need to address in a fair and equitable way so that uh, we can make progress and maintain, uh, retain and, and uh, hire the best teachers we can. It's not, it's not because of anything related specifically to our plan. It is just a general trend in the industry. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Um, this is either for uh, Chuck or Mike. Can you just confirm that uh, now that Chapter 78 has been sunsetted, the 2% uh, cap has still remained in effect? Is that true? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a question regarding this budget. Um, did we come in at the 2% or are we under that or above that? Well, we can't be above that. In the, March, in the March presentation that Kyle made, we came in at even at the 2%. Thank you very much for that presentation, and thank you for enlightening us as board members. We appreciate it. <laughs> yes. And with board member remarks and additional comments on non-agenda items. Do you have any remarks or comments? Okay. All right, I'd like to move on to um, old business. May I have a motion uh, for minutes? Uh, Mr. D'Angelo and Mr. De Silva. Ms. Conico. Abstain. Mr. Salarini. Yes. Ms. Curry. Uh, yes. Mr. D'Angelo. Yes. Ms. Davis. Abstain. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise. Yes. Mr. Gallo. Yes. And Ms. Barrett. Yes. I'd like to take new business um, A through K. May I have a motion, please? Um, Mr. Um, D'Angelo and Mr. Gallo. Second. <laughs> Any questions or comments, Ms. Curry? Please. Yes. I just wanted to say that. Um, Yes. Mm -hmm. That what a loss it is uh, for this principal, Brian Miller. I think if anyone were to make a movie about a middle school, he would be the person that would play the middle school principal. Um, his voice, his, his uh, character, the way he cared about the children. Um, I did a lot of work when my kids were going through the middle school, so I saw his enthusiasm with not just the academics, but also the extracurricular, with the talent show, with the graduation. Um, ceremony and I think it's quite a loss and I hope that he enjoyed working in the district as much as we got out of having his care. Thank you. I, I'd like to second that. I'm, I'm going to miss his eighth grade uh, promotion <laughs> presentations. Particularly the last it's going to have to be amazing this year, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those comments. I also I have another remembrance for Mr. Miller. Um, my sister, my, I work in a family business, and my sister and my brother and I work together, and my sister typically answers the phone, and on snow days, when Mr. Miller would call, my sister would immediately shout for joy when she heard Mr. Miller's voice, his distinct, uh, you know, as we all know, <laughs> I need to not say further, 
And uh, another remembrance I have is when I, my son was in the eighth grade play many years ago as Augustus Glump in, um, in the uh, Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. And to this day, whenever my son sees Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller says, oh, Augustus Glump. And to you know, have that recollection of students for such a long period of time is a tribute to his uh, dedication to the craft. Very nice. Thank you. I'd like to take new business. Eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we had all this <laughs> accolades. Sorry. We need to take a roll call. Oh, we have a motion. Uh, we just need a roll call on items uh, 15 A through K. Okay. Ms. Conico. Yes. Mr. Saldarini. Yes. Ms. Curry. Yes. Mr. D'Angelo. Yes. Ms. Davis. Yes. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes, except I abstain on item A, check number 81659. And Ms. Barrett? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now I'd like to take um, 16 A through I under new business. May I have a motion, please? Ms. Curry and Mr. De Silva, second. Any discussion on this? Okay, Kyle, let's play quick. Ms. Conoco. Yes. Mr. Saldarini. Yes. Ms. Curry. Yes. Mr. D'Angelo. Yes. Ms. Davis. Yes. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise. Yes. Mr. Gallo. Yes. And Ms. Barron. Yes. Okay, this is time for public questions or comments. And note this section of public participation will be limited to 15 <laughs> minutes. Come on up, step up to the microphone and please announce your name and your address, please. Um, Debbie Lane, 43 Masonicus Road. Uh, Debbie Lane, 43 Masonicus <laughs> Road. <laughs> um, I hope you don't mind if I use my notes. I, I figured the president uses a teleprompter, so um, I'm going to go with this. And my notes have notes now since uh, your presentation. I completely appreciate. No good. Are you are you tech support? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good job. Um, I, I always, I, once before I, I address the board, and I always start with a thank you, and I really do thank you. I, I imagine being on any board is a lot of complaints and not a lot of compliments. Um, I know you work hard, and my family appreci appreciates you and the policies that you put forth in order to enable our teachers and nurses and custodians to do their jobs. That being said, <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, and I promise to make this brief, a couple of years ago, my husband and I decided to build a house. We could have gone to just about anywhere in northern Bergen County, but we decided to stay in Matwa. Our daughter's in seventh grade and has been in the system since kindergarten. Uh, we know what we have here, and we like it very much. We considered many factors in making our decision, but by far the number one reason we stayed in Matwa was because of the school system. I actually brag about our district. I'm very proud of all the accomplishments, sports, academics, the arts, a board president who had the guts to opt her own children out of the park. You're my hero. <laughs> Unfortunately, my image of an almost perfect system was tarnished when I read a quote in the suburban news. I'm just gonna say this is a note on my note. There's a big trust factor. This is, this is the sense I get. Um, I, I know a lot of these teachers. My daughter's in seventh grade, she's had a lot. Some of them, I am a retired teacher. I know some of them just through being a teacher for many years in Bergen County. There's a breakdown in trust here. Um, I get why they won't meet with you without an NJEA rep. I see you, you all seem like perfectly normal, nice people. But you're the Board of Education and they're the MEA. Um, there is a breakdown in trust. Um, and when I say that, unfortunately, my image of an almost perfect system was tarnished, it's when I read a quote in the Suburban News not too long ago regarding the lack of progress being made during negotiations with the MEA. Mr. Saldrini, and I promise to stop picking on you. Once this settles, I'm going to send you the biggest bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Mr. Saldarini, you said any significant breakthroughs are unlikely before the next mediation session on May 2nd. The district will not waver for an offer if presented. Um, it, uh, will, will not waver from an offer it presented to the union on July 14, 2015. We're 
were talking nine months ago. Let me tell you, I'm proud of you guys because I wouldn't honestly, it took me a long time to figure out that you didn't have um, a, a contract. I drove up one day and I saw teachers with the shirts and just because I was a teacher I knew exactly what that meant. I'm so sorry you have to do that. But my, the kids don't know this. They, nine months and, and no, you won't waver. So then I thought, my gosh, I was going to ask a question about negotiating in good faith. But if Mr. Salderini's statement is accurate, it's very clear that the board team isn't negotiating anymore at all. So what good faith? We're not even not I'm, I'm assuming Mr. Salderini speaks for the entire team since he's the chief negotiator. I feel very strongly that you have an obligation to the MEA and the students of MAWA to settle this contract on the best terms possible. We understand there are financial constraints. These are not unreasonable people. They get it. But when you make comments like that to the suburban news, you, you, you don't sound good. You know, you just doesn't sound good. It just doesn't sound good. Um, and, and, to that, and to add to that, I've never heard or read about any, any MEA member taking such a non-productive stance. The Board of Ed and the MEA have a relationship. No relationship works when one side digs their heels in. And I know we have a mediation session coming up, but if the board's team goes in with a closed mind, you'll be doing a disservice to the district and, quite honestly, wasting the taxpayers' money. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, And I truly don't know the answer. A lot of what you said, I'm very aware of. I understand the whole of this process of negotiating. It stinks, and it stinks ever more since the two percent cap. It's terrible. But I do have a question. So, so if the current team, and I, I don't know if I'm. I guess I'm going to ask you, Mrs. Barron. Am I correct? You, you can ask me and I'll see if okay. I can answer that. So, if old. the current team can't get the job done, is it possible? Should a new team be? formed in order to move forward in a productive, positive manner? I don't have an answer for that right now. Um, I think that's something that we could look at, but I, I'm confident in my team right now, um, but that's something that we could discuss as a board. Great. Um, I can give an answer. I just yeah. think it's yeah. Gallo, we, we need to that. trust. I'd like to, I'd like, I'm, I'm new to the board. I'm uh -huh. new to the negotiations committee. And I can tell you that when we met on January 12th, we met, I think, for four or five hours, and 90% of the time that we were over in the office over there, and the MEA and the NGA were over here, we spent 80 to 90% of our time brainstorming ideas to figure out how to get an, uh, through this process, yeah. figuring out new alternatives, new approaches, new incentives. Uh, I, can, I can assure you that however you might have read that statement, that the group of people who are involved in the negotiations are working tirelessly. I can, poor Kyle this week, we must have sent him 20 or 30 spreadsheet requests, mm -hmm. information requests, process requests, um, <laughs> numerous inquiries about how we can make, uh, make, make forward progress. S from the time that I've been involved, and, I, and, and, I can, and my sense is, knowing the, the, the folks that are on the committee, that they have worked tirelessly mm -hmm. in response to any inquiry that has been made by the MEA. The bottom line, though, is in any negotiation, you don't want to get yourself into a situation where you're negotiating against yourself. So in, an, in the absence of counteroffers, it's very difficult for us to make, to make us, you know, otherwise we're just negotiating right. with ourselves. Right. So counteroffers are always helpful. When we had the meeting on the 31st, we really, the, the stimulus was we wanted to have a, a better sense of the problem statement from the MEA uh, mm -hmm. position. What is it exactly is the stumbling, stumbling block that has prevented us from coming to a deal since July when, when, our, when, when as Rick said, that we put in writing uh, the proposal. Mm -hmm. and, and we had, I think, a very open and honest dialogue about what those issues are. And, and w the MEA walked away with homework. We walked away with homework. We're meeting after this meeting. To work on some of that homework, so uh, I I I don't know how we can. Uh, that's the statement is read by you in a certain way, 
Um, I can assure you that you know, your board members, your negotiating committee has worked diligently. Read the way it was. Yeah, yeah. if you say quote. we won't waver, the, it's probably maybe and maybe it, well, it, it was spoken statement. without thought. You can read me the statement again. I mean, Any I, significant the breakthrough? It was in the suburban news. No, Any I understand that. significant just... breakthroughs are unlikely before the next mediation session on May second. Right. The district will not waver from an offer it presented the union on July 24th, 2015. Right. That's, that's basically making the point that Michael was just making, right? We, we made an offer. We I think it says you were not going to negotiate. No, but I, that's well, not what it says. That's what it says. It says you will not wait. Exactly. I think that. I mean, but but it doesn't asking. matter. I don't work for you. I do. I actually, you, I guess you kind of work for me. But, but, I, but I just, I live in the town. My daughter goes to school here. She, she's very happy. I read that and I go, oh, come on. Okay. Look, you know. so you, you certainly can take issue with the, with the words and the quote okay. at the time that I, I said them. It sends a we, bad message. Okay. I, we could get into other, whether or not there's a mutual set of bad messages being sent, but let's not do that, right? So I think the fundamental point is we, we sat down on the 31st of March. So after the quote that you're reading back to me was was published, mm -hmm. right? We, we got together, we met on the 31st, exactly as, as Rick has indicated and, and uh, Michael has indicated and, and Doug has reinforced. Uh, we came away with a much better sense of exactly what the problem is mm -hmm. that we have to try to solve. Right. Okay? So we went to work on that front. So what you're I, saying I is you will waver. You're, what you're saying is we will negotiate. You're not just... We will stuck. absolutely we, negotiate. You said we will and, negotiate. Okay, well, I, I take that word waver and it means... Where, and it means you're not moving. If you're not wavering, you're not moving. If you're not moving, you're not negotiating. But That's let's not spend hours on that. you can't negotiate against yourself. We, we made an offer. Mm -hmm. There's never been a formal response okay. to that offer. There's never been a counter. If they, you were purchasing the home, back to what you were earlier identifying, mm -hmm. and you kept raising your number over and over again, and nobody ever countered, how would you be negotiating? You wouldn't be, right? So all I said, and again, you know, it didn't mean to indicate to anybody in the room or your group or anybody else mm -hmm. that we weren't interested in negotiating, because we've repeatedly said it, and we did it on the 31st, and we came away with homework which we're dutifully following up on. Mm -hmm. So. You know, there's nothing else I can tell you about that other than that's exactly what's happened. Okay, so you're willing to negotiate, you're willing to be fair. If you need and, a and statement the, from me right now that unequivocally makes it clear that we are prepared to negotiate, then consider this that unequivocal statement. And also, what I'm saying that... It's also the statement I released to the patch, also the statement I released to the Suburban News. Okay. I, um, and I know my, I'm sure my three minutes is way up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the one thing I can say to you, as someone who was public school teacher for over 30 years um, the team the team generally doesn't know this is this is their livelihood you know they have families too they're making thousands of dollars less than they did years ago because of we're all kind at that point we're in this together because this is this comes down from our governor basically um, but they don't know in a way that they can trust you and that that those kind of statements even you may not have meant anything by it but that they hear that and they and they run with that because it means so much to them this is an emotional this is their job this is their family this is everything um, and I will tell you, NJEA is probably telling them also, don't meet without someone because you have an attorney. They have a, basically an NJEA rep is basically a retired teacher. You know, so, so you you kind of have yeah, yeah, yeah. you kind of have the upper hand. Absolutely. much. I know you put the time in and I do appreciate it, but I really hope that I can come to the next meeting and say thanks. <laughs> we hope you too. Okay. Really do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tom, right? Um, Deirdre Wilson, um, this parent. Um, I still kind of have the same question. Do you think that the teachers deserve a raise? Yes, um, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. Because you made me nervous, Mr. De Silva, when you said there was no hope. <laughs> No, with the well, whole, let me, let me, I know you clarified it, but it's a concern process, for me right. because the state set up the process for a reason of mediation, a good faith way for two to come together 
and come to you know uh, a settlement in a, in a, a way. One would think that's why they set it up. They're not wasting you know money and time, our time. I would hope that the state had good faith in setting up the mediation process. So I think if you're in it, you got to have a positive attitude about finding a way to work together. And it you know is set up for a reason. So I think going into it negative, you're going to get a negative result. If you think there's no hope, there will be no hope. So try to be more positive. I definitely agree with your saying about the face to face. Mm -hmm. But there was a reason that we came. You guys came to an impasse, right? I mean. There was a reason. So, as a parent, um, that's a big question for me. So it's really good to hear you guys say you do think that they deserve a raise. It's pretty much impossible. As you, I was great that you showed 1.8 million dollars there, you know, contributing to their health care. So I, you know, I think it'll be years before they ever make what they were making a couple years ago. But um, can the board please explain why they are okay with teachers earning less and less money year after year? That's something that was really bothering me today when I was thinking about that because. Um, increased health care costs, which was great that you showed that because, you know, what do we know how much money? That's a significant amount of money that these teachers um, are paying, and it, it's led to a sizable decline in their paychecks. Um, teachers are taking on second and third jobs, you know, coming out, all, you know, every meeting um, just to try to take care of their families, right? Like all of us, it's all we want to do is take care of our families. Uh, a year is almost up, and negotiations continue, and you explained that very well. As a parent, I worry that our skilled MAWA teachers will leave and work in districts that value their teachers. I read the paper every day. I see a lot of districts that are, are giving their teachers a fair share and settling on time. Uh, some aren't, but some are. Um, and they're going to work in districts where they feel valued and they, they want to go to work. And they feel that, you know, to hear about MAWA High School, that's awesome. That, that's amazing. All these teachers contributed to that. I mean, you know, from kindergarten up. And you have to feel really good about that as a superintendent um, and as parent, that makes me really happy. But thinking that the teachers will leave, I'm worried about that. I grew up in Mawa. I moved back to Mawa because I wanted my children to be educated in this town, in this town. Please do the job that we elected you to do. We elected all of you to do this job. I and the people of Mawa entrusted you to do what is right for Mawa and our children, their education. Um, please work with our hardworking teachers and settle their contract now. And you made it clear that you do think they deserve a raise, so please do what you can to make that happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've been on this board for 10 years, and I really, I've been through this before with crowds of people, parents and teachers coming. And one thing that really gets me, and gets me choked up, is when a parent will come up and say that they think that we don't value our teachers. Because that could not be, that could not be further from the truth. I mean, we are all volunteers here. You're paid teachers, but you volunteer your time in so many other ways. I, that just bothers me so much. And as far as valuing them, if you're talking about valuing them through races, if you look at past practices of what we've done with, done with all our future contracts, I'm sure that when this gets settled, we'll, we'll all be one big happy family again. But please don't ever say that we don't value our teachers. Thank you, Mrs. Curry. Very well said. Hi, my name is Yasmina Yosich, and I am a parent of a child in a kindergarten. Um, and I came here, I mean, my background is educational policy and research, and I do a lot of work in urban education, and I care about what is happening there, and we know we can put a lot of money in resources. We can have the best buildings or the worst building, but what really matters is the school climate, is the teachers. It's where the biggest impact is made. So we can have the best schools, the best facilities, but we need best teachers as well. And when my child... Um, last spring, I had to make a decision whether to keep my child advanced pre-K in a private school and everyone was telling me I need to spend more money and I could have afforded it. I'm lucky to be able to afford it. But I also know as someone who writes about a public education and deeply cares about it, I need to support public education. And yes, I bought a place, a condo um, in Mawa um, because I know about Mawa schools and I cared and first thing I do about the the, 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 job, the, the homes, we do check the schools. It's also about the politics. Board of Education, none of you come from the education background, you come from very valuable experiences, and you're also kind of gaining that experience about education, what matters about the teachers. So for us, it's about our children. And our children come hand in hand with teachers. Our children spend more time in school than with us on average per week. Mm -hmm. 
And one morning in October, when my key, five and a half year old daughter was sitting in the back, back seat and I was dropping her off, I can see in the back mirror how concerned she was that her teacher was standing outside with a sign. She didn't ask question, but I knew as a parent I need to talk to her. And I explained to her that her teachers just want us parents to know that they're doing a great job. And she was okay for that for the morning. In the afternoon, I wanted to tell her the whole story. She deserved it. And our children get the whole story. They're being developed into a whole child in our Mawa schools. Not just academic achievement, a whole child. And I explained to her that her teachers are working hard and they're just asking to, and I asked her that they're doing a good job. Is it fair to, should their teachers be paid for the job they're doing just in the same way that her mom and dad are being paid? And of course, five-year-old five said yes. And it's good for her. She has seen that in a couple of other instances and I try to educate her on that. But I want to remind you, we send every morning our children to schools and we trust our teachers. Because without that, I know my child won't develop and she's excellent. She's enjoying the school. She loves it. She would never go to that private school again. But I want to remind you that we have entrusted you to make these schools great and you cannot make them great without teachers. So please rethink this. We know you, you value it, but take it also the fact that we value, we as parents, we value our children and we value you that, that you will find in yourself a way to, to negotiate through this process because you have to negotiate and they are teachers and they are in difficult situations. Being in a private company, it's a one thing when you don't get your pay raise one week. Because you get, yes, you get a really bad health care and all of that, and you're used to it. But for the start, our children are spending a lot of time there. The teachers are doing a lot of work. So please see through all of that and, and negotiate in this process. Thank you. Thank you very much. James D'Alessio, Mawa Education Association, and I speak on behalf of my family. Can I take this out of here? Yes. yes. Perfect. Um, there's so much I'd like to say, but I really want to get right to the point. Um, we're bleeding money every year. Take-home pay, not salary. We know the difference. Take-home pay is down a lot. Real money that really matters to us raising our families and paying bills. It's not a game. You are all well aware of Chapter 78 and the sunset provision, and the sun has set on Chapter 78. It's time to negotiate health care. That's what this is all about. So my question is really simple, because you know as well as I do that if you don't negotiate our health care contributions, we, will not con we won't stop bleeding money. It's that simple. So I'd like to know, are you willing to negotiate health care to settle this contract? And I'm speaking to Mr. Saldarini. I can't make it more clear than I've already made it, that we're prepared to negotiate, have been prepared to negotiate. Okay? Does that include health care? Uh, we can't negotiate against ourselves. I also can't negotiate in public. So the, I, I, we are aware, absolutely, of what is happening in terms of uh, the impact of, of the cost of health care. Um, and as I've said in other statements that I've made, Part of our offer is designed to try to help you and other members of the group um, deal with that. Okay? But we, we can't negotiate against ourselves. I don't know a different way to say it. We had a terrific session on the 31st and would, would love to continue those sessions. Um, but it is not purely a case of us just trying to accommodate every element of, of what we're looking for. There has got to be an ability to sit down and maybe trust was the operative word from the woman who spoke earlier and you get trust faster when you're sitting around the table with each other talking to each other as opposed to when it's being done between two quote unquote mediators in one room to another. So, uh, and I'll tell you what we said to the folks in the session on the 31st. I don't think you could find a committee that's more interested in looking at the whole compensation framework and evaluating every piece of the compensation and trying to figure out a way to get this done. But I'll tell you right now, the way it's been done in the past is not going to solve the problem. We have an inexorably growing health care premium that we do not control. Okay? We cannot 
create raises sufficient to keep up with every dollar of that. There has got to be a way to create both a combination of raises that make sense and ways to help our membership realize that there may be other choices they can make with their health care plans. Almost 90% of the group is in the most expensive health care plan. And that cost has got to be addressed. We have to find a way to address that. So I don't, I don't have a good answer for you other than to say we're absolutely willing to sit down and negotiate. I would repeat the, the, the session on the 31st, eight days in a row, if, if we could schedule it, because I thought the tone was right and I thought we made progress. And I really thought, again, I'm speaking you know, from a committee perspective now, we came away with a, with a clearer understanding of the problem or one of the problems that we have to fix. I cannot fix the cost of the health care increase. I cannot do it. It's not within our control or our power. Okay? And we've even started the process of looking at whether or not there are alternatives to the state health care benefits plan. Maybe we can do better on the private side. Don't know yet. We just started that process. Okay? But there ain't nobody on this committee that wants to be in a situation where we think we are not able to keep people moving forward with respect to, to their income. And there would be no, we would have to have no motivation or interest or incentive to do that. Well, None that's, that's whatsoever. Good to know because Zero. <clears throat> okay, I don't get no, be very clear. I don't, we don't get paid for this. This isn't a private deal where like, I would catch some percentage of what we save. That's not I, like, the case. I understand. And I've taught some of your children, and I know we're, we're all looking for the best interests here, but, you know, I don't know that you know what it's like to continually lose money every year, but then sort of be con given this raise that doesn't exist. This is not a state issue anymore. It's a local issue. The sun has set. It's up to you guys to make the negotiation now because we are allowed to. The way I read the law, the sunset provision wouldn't exist in the first place if they didn't want it to expire. Those the, what we're putting in is unrealistic for our salaries. It's unrealistic for what we make. We never went into education to make big money. That wasn't what this was all about, but we certainly didn't go into suddenly at 15 years in with two advanced degrees to make less money year and year and year and year again. How do you think that makes us feel? It's time to do something about the problem. I don't care at this point how it happens, but something has to happen that's more than what's been happening in the past. The problems are new, but the law has, is over. It's done. It's expired. So you're right. 78 has sunset. Thank you. You're right. Okay. The property tax cap is not on. Just a number, Jim. So the... Just a number. It, I'm sorry. I'm not... I'm, I have to sit because I'm so worked up and I don't want to be, but I can't change the way things are for me and my family at this point. This is a career for us. It's not temporary. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I'm much shorter than he is. Um, Anne-Marie Flattigbell, 42 Meadow Lake Drive. Um, OK, so I attended the MEA's town hall meeting last week. Um, and I understand that each member of the board was invited to attend. Um, they received a personal invitation, but I couldn't help but notice that none of the members were in attendance, and I'd like to actually, know why. I did not receive one. I don't know if it's else did. I did, and I was away at a funeral, so I was unable to attend, and I let Ms. Dorsey know about that. I, I was visiting my dad at a nursing home, so I couldn't attend. <laughs> 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 tell, tell you, I really wanted to be there. I really wanted to be there and listen to what you guys had to say. Um, it was not for lack of it. But, you know, okay, because as a, as a parent, I just want to say um, one thing. This is our, my first experience in the public school system. Um, I have two older daughters that are beyond college at this point. Um, we went all through Catholic school, including <coughs> attending IHA. Uh, I have a seventh grader here in Mawa. And I have to say, by far, the school system in Mawa is phenomenal. My husband and I grew up in the Bronx. We went to Catholic school. We had the kids young, so and then we have a big space between my youngest. And I have to say, I just want to say, it's these teachers. I can list every teacher from kindergarten in George Washington up to seventh grade right now. And I have to say, looking at the Catholic school system that my kids were in, my two older daughters, public school, Mawa, is two years ahead of where they were. So I just, you know, and it's, it's due to the teachers and the dedication of the teachers. And last week, me attending was my first time attending any of these kinds of meetings, it was an eye opener for me as well. So I just, you know, want them to feel valued and, you know, from a parent's point of view, they are really, I wouldn't want them to leave because it has to be demoralizing at some point when, when you don't get settled. You just don't feel like, you want to feel a sense of worth. 
And I know they hear it from parents. I hope they hear it from parents. Um, but I, I really feel like if, if we can just get this done so that, you know, we, they can get back to doing what they do best. Thank you. Thank you. My board is very passionate about this, and the teachers are all passionate about this, and I appreciate that. And I'd like to see everyone get together and be one happy family and get this solved. Um, I want to also remind everyone that there are members of this board that have children in the school district, and we really value our teachers as well. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Andy Butel. I'm with the MEA. I don't know if this is on. Uh, so, in the record article from this past Saturday, I believe, uh, following our town hall meeting, which I too was disappointed not to see any of you there, um, Mr. Saldarini, uh, you were quoted as saying, the board has absolutely no reluctance to complete a positive, mutually acceptable new contract with our teachers in exactly the same manner we have successfully concluded agreements with our principals and supervisors. And Mr. De Silva, you spoke about this too, and that was a very nice chart that you put up there. Uh, does that mean that you are willing to pay individual teachers a 2.9% raise on their individual salaries, as you did for the administrators? Because that's how I interpreted that chart and your comments in the paper. Well, that's not really up to us so much, right? Uh, you, you're, would you, the way your the raises are distributed or according to your salary guides, that's not within... This, this is what I Okay, I think if, I misinterpreted if it were, if the information in the to, paper To answer your chart, question, yeah. if it were up to us, yeah. Yeah, that, that's sort of, you know, before the meeting on, on March 31st, that's kind of the impression that we were under. And that's, that meeting on the 31st really was, you know, us looking at each other saying we, we put together what we thought was a, a, a fairly comprehensive sort of checked all the boxes offer, and we didn't really have a clear understanding of why the no. So that meeting on the 31st really for us was to try and understand why the no. And I think we walked Were you away aware of the session on the 31st? I'm sorry? Were you aware of the session that we held on the 31st? Yes. You were. So uh, you, you no, had uh, Was there, it was with the MEA? Right. Yes. Uh, so I mean, loosely. I'm not on the negotiation No, but team. you got briefed roughly? A little bit. I mean, little, negotiations little is confidenti uh, confidential. I, I understand. So, but you know, I mean, not negotiating in public is part of the, trying not to, the but agreement. I mean, so. But you were aware at the open house that we had the session on the 31st, right? Uh, as much as someone who is not on the negotiations. Let me get to the point. Was it, was it, would it have been worthwhile from your perspective in terms of the spirit of trust to mention that we had the session on the 31st? No, but as much as I can speak as a non-negotiator, I mean, I, you know, I think this is, again, uh, Mrs. Lane spoke eloquently about the lack of trust. I mean, I think this is what we're talking about. From our perspective, from our perspective, not having a settled contract three of the last five years, not having a contract for the last 10 months, you know, reading quotes and papers that say we're not wavering from a position that we offered in July. So Excuse me. we have the session on the 31st, it does not get mentioned, at least in the video that I saw, it's not mentioned in the, in the open house. Um, and so if we're, if we're going to agree tonight, that we should get together as mutually interested parties in resolving the matter, right? And let's get on with doing that, okay? And let's do it with, um, and I'll stipulate this if, again, the, if people did not like my quote, I had no interest in, in antagonizing anybody with that particular quote. I was speaking to the fact that at that time, the next session that was scheduled was, in fact, the fact finder session. Okay, we didn't have anything else on the books. Then we had the thing on the 31st. You held the open house. Okay? So it's frustrating sometimes on our end to feel like we are sincerely interested in getting this done. And then, you know, watch the videotape, and you have multiple issues that you're discussing there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're fundamentally creating the impression that we're not willing to negotiate. And you're fundamentally trying to get parental attention around the idea that this may have a deleterious or detrimental impact on the educational product, which we have no interest in. No, that's not. That's... So to the extent my quote landed badly on you, your open house didn't land great on me. 
Okay. Now. Well, again, you, 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 were, invited, you were invited to attend. And I had a conference. And, and we, we had, had, a, I had an a open question and answer session with parents. I and our to, objective was not to I in any way to, slander the board, but just to address some a, issues I that we've noticed. I communicated to that I had a conflict I, I could not make. Right. Okay. But I watched the videotape thanks to um, all, all I'm saying is um, we're not going to get this done here. We need to do more of what we were doing on the 31st. So we're game. I think, I mean, look, I'm not going to negotiate in public. I'm not even a negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all right. You should think about it. But I, I think that we all, I mean, Jim spoke, uh, you know, I think really on point about, you know, the fundamental issue. Um, we are, we feel like we are really great at what we do. Um, I, I think our test scores bear that out. I think the U.S. News and World Report, um, you know, bears that out. And we genuinely, I mean, I'd like to think that you feel the same way. Um, but when we're taking home less money each year, and now, and yes, of course, the state superseded the collective bargaining agreement four years ago. But now that's not the case anymore. All, all the state requires is from our end a 1.5 percent of our salary contribution to health care so look there's we're a, looking for you know some relief uh, i think a, that's basically what it's about and we feel like yes there are a number of issues um happening all at the same time federal education policies state policies and yeah local issues but all together it's definitely having an impact on the direction this district is going in and we feel passionately about maintaining the excellence of this district. We, I mean, I don't, I don't know how long you plan to be on the board, but I plan to be a teacher here for another 20 years. And so, you know, I, I feel like I have a vested interest in seeing this district continue to go in the right direction. And I think we're a little concerned about the trend. And three of the last five years, you know, that's, that's a troubling trend. I, I, I've been here. Um, you know, I, I graduated here in 81. There is no comparison between the educational product that I participated in through 1981 and the educational product that my children participated in through 2010 and 2014. Okay? Um, I have every interest in ensuring that the district continue on an elite course. Okay? Absolutely feel that way. You can ask these folks and talk to people on the instruction committee and ask them what I talk about when we have those sessions. Um, we have complicated, confounding financial issues that make it harder to do than it ever was, uh, than it was before. And I was a guy who was out there campaigning for property tax increases of high single digits or above back in the day before the property tax thing came to make sure that the school system did, did get the funds that it, that it needed. Okay? I haven't changed my view about that. All right? But if you want to make progress, if you are as sincere... It, wait, as I'm sorry, just as a follow-up to that. Has the board considered putting to a public vote going beyond the 2% revenue increase cap? Because that's part of the law as well that was neglected to be mentioned here. We're, we're aware of, of what we can and cannot do in, in that regard. But, but let me finish the thought, which is, if you're sincerely interested, and I believe you are, then let's keep doing what we did on the 31st. Okay? Thank you very much. Pass it on to the negotiator. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody behind me. I'd like to pick, oh, I'm sorry. Regina Guth, grade seven social studies negotiations chairperson, co chair. Um, I have so many things I'd like to say as well, but I'm just going to limit to a few comments. Um, I'd just like to uh, address. The, uh, the, what Andy Butel just referenced in, as far as the administrator's salaries are concerned. Um, I'm not as much interested in the quote in the paper, exactly the same. That doesn't bother me so much as the misleading idea that when in the public it is stated, we've negotiated with administrators and with uh, supervisors and whatnot, and, and those numbers were revealed in the paper. 
What bothers me is I'm pretty sure hmm, the general public does not understand what that means. That the administrators and the supervisors who historically, for as long as I can remember, have always settled their contract after the MEA. It's one thing. And the other thing is this. Every administrator, supervisor who settled their contract, and I'm very happy for them, so happy for them, because they actually got that percentage on their salary. Much higher, Much higher salary than the general membership <laughs> behind me. And I think that the average citizen of Mawa is not aware that when we negotiate, say, for 2.8%, Parents, we don't get 2.8% on our individual salary. If you were to offer us that this evening, everybody in this room, we would settle. Yes. Okay? So I don't think that it's, I think it's a misleading, a misleading thing to say. But we've offered them this, and the administrators settle. Why? And I've heard parents say this. Why, don't the, why doesn't the membership settle? because we're not getting 2.8% on our individual salaries. So I think now that that's a matter of record, that that is something the public needs to be aware of, okay? Two point whatever percent gets distributed across our salary guide. That is the way it is. So now, now the public knows. The other thing I wanna reference, and I'll just take another minute of your time, is the lovely PowerPoint presentation you put together. I'm glad that you folks put that together because oftentimes I come to this board meetings and when the time comes for there to be a report out on negotiations, nothing is said. I've been here many times. I've always been perplexed by that because I know things are going on as a negotiations chairperson and nothing gets said. So I want to mention the idea about the timeline. I respectfully submit that I disagree with some of that information, okay? Uh, I would like to say that the January 19th meeting was a fact-finding meeting, if I'm not mistaken. And that was the very first time since day one that the two sides came together across the table. That was the first time there was at the slightest intimation that the board might be willing now to maybe talk about health benefits. January 2016, the very first day you made it clear, the very first day we met, you made it clear you weren't interested. That's not negotiating in good faith. When you say, we like the way it is, we don't want to talk about it. And that was not reflected in your timeline. I just wanted to make that note. Thank you very much. Wait, yes, I'm sorry. The January 16th meeting. January 19th. I, I'm sorry. I, I, it was the second fact-finding meeting. The mediation session. Correct. I, maybe I have my terminology right. I thought those were mediation fact finding is coming up. At we had two of those already. Two fact finding. That's what that's what they intended to be. I, I, they I, turned I, out to I, be mediation sessions, well, right? I, 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 I mean, the, okay, so if we have the the, the per terminology wrong, that, that's, that's all right. That's that, not a, right. It's not. It's not important. We, we don't. It's not that we. we yeah, I know. I understand. So, that's not important. Um, when we met in January. I think all we were trying to accomplish with respect to briefing the board on the timeline is that there, there have been multiple efforts to, to try to get together. I, yes. I, I don't believe that the sessions where we stay in one room and your team stays in another room are nearly as productive as the ones that we have when we are around the same table. Um, well, we've only had one of those. Well, we've had a few of those, but we, we can go back and compare our notes and let's not negotiate whether or not we actually met. Correct. Because if Correct. that's the case, then. Yes, then yes, you're I know. Right. We really should just reset the whole thing. But um, the non binding nature of the PERC process mm -hmm. is. I, I don't know how a non binding process 
helps. And so um, we, we both know what we have to get done. Yes. And so I, I think the only way that is going to progress is, is through more sessions. And so again, I, I felt like what we did on the 31st was, was very productive. Our session after tonight is to have Kyle basically re-educate the committee members on exactly the dynamic that you were describing a moment ago so we can better understand it. Um, I, and like I said yeah, on the 31st, Regina, I don't think you could have three people on a committee or four people on the committee that, that are more interested in looking at every aspect of the compensatory framework and saying what needs to be adjusted or can be addressed relative to the fact that now membership is contributing to health care, which is not something that they were doing three, four years ago. And in, in the cases where members are contributing uh, very high amounts, okay, who are at the high end of the salary grid the way Michael laid it out, um, we, we got to find an answer to that. That is not something that, that we're, we would, would like to, 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 it doesn't make sense to us. It just doesn't. Um, but A lot of things don't make sense to us. Right. Well, on the so, other side of the table. And, and that's the reason why we need to have more face-to-face. -face. We're not opposed to that. Perfect. I think we've been in agreement there. with a lot of things. Yes. We all, I think the teachers are fantastic. We all, um, a lot of things don't make sense to both sides. So we've been in agreement with a lot of different things that we've discussed this evening. And I think if we can bring it back to a personal level, as, as Chuck is trying to say right now, that we get things done when we can talk face to face. I think that's um, a better way. Thank you. I would just like to ask Kyle a question. I'm going to put you on the spot, Kyle. I'm wondering if you've made any progress with uh, organizing the educational assistance workshop that we had discussed weeks ago and still has not been taken care of yet. Any progress on that? Yes, there has been some progress. I'm going to discuss it with the committee tonight and hope we'll get back to you shortly. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your comments. I want to thank everyone this evening for coming out. And we value your comments. Oh, Evelyn Slotbauer, 43 Thunderhead Place. I just wanted to make one last comment. I would like to thank all the teachers for putting up with the disruption of the park mm -hmm. and what happened today and being able to turn it around and teach our children instead of giving them the park exam. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd like to have a motion to adjourn, please. Thank you, Mr. D'Angelo, Mr. Gallo, second. Thank you all for coming this evening.